situation in China. I'm sure you're watching this very closely. Are you concerned about contagion risk? And do you consider China to be investable right now? We are concerned about contagion risk. And, and really, I think what we're having to adapt to is a new world where we can no longer count on China being this, the countercyclical force to some of the more developed markets. Right? We've Earlier in the show, you talked about fighting a slowdown with just additional debt. And that's what we've been doing here for the last over a decade and a half. And now it's really starting to come to bear. The consumer can't support that increased debt stock. Governments around the world can't support that increased debt stock. And we are worried about that contagion because China is slowing, but it's slowing along with the entirety of the rest of the world on the back of higher rates and just that constant pulling forward of demand. So we've seen the government take a few measures to try and stabilize the situation. but. Is it enough? And what more needs to be done, in your, your view? Yeah, right now it isn't enough. And I think the most interesting part to be watching as many of those Chinese officials come back from their secret retreat to see what they do roll out. But China's in a tough spot because one of the traditional measures would be that it weakens its currency. But of course, on the back of trying to insert it into one of the large global uh, uh, reserve currencies of the world, I think China will be reluctant to significantly continue weakening its currency. So we'll have to watch and wait, but I, I really don't think there's much they can do, and I don't think there's much a lot of governments around the world can do. We're simply having to pay for all of that pull forward of demand that we've had on the back of low rates and easy fiscal and monetary policies. Jeff, you manage two huge global bond funds, and China Inc. is obviously issuing a lot less bonds, a lot less fixed income in the universe these days. Would you be interested in China fixed income at all, or are you concerned there might be a crisis in the waiting? I think it's less about a crisis from the bond perspective, but it would be a little bit more of a crisis from the currency perspective. As I mentioned, I don't expect to see China significantly weaken its currency, but it's something that as global bond investors, we would have to watch very carefully. Now, of course, on the back of that, China used to be the, the, the country with notably higher rates relative to the rest of the world, and that just simply isn't true today. It's relatively easy to get 4 5 or even 6% in, in many global markets and very high-quality bonds. So for us as global bond investors today, we're, 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 we're focusing on safety and, and playing uh, not so, so much in China, but more the U.S. and, and parts of the Eurozone. So explain to us how you could see you know, returns disappear from the government bond market universe, because that's literally what happened in the last month. And many, not just yourselves, but many houses are doubling down on this idea that there is a recession coming and that this is not the wrong trade. Ex explain that to us. I mean, we've been saying for quite some time, the recession is delayed, it's not canceled. As we watch all of the incoming economic data, and if we were to rewind the clock thus far, the recession is playing out almost exactly as we would expect, with the consumer slowing, right? With we see sentiment broadly deteriorating, we see loan conditions tightening. Now it hasn't led to, to that, that precipice, that cliff of an outright recession. So it is delayed, but it's happening in lockstep to what we would expect. So it has been a surprise on the back of all of this to see government bond yields continue to rise. But I think we've been talking about this for quite some time. The world is expecting an immediate pivot once we see weakness, and we're just not going to get it this time around because we're emerging from a very low inflationary environment back to the more normal state of the world, which is a, a sustained higher inflationary uh, environment. So we do have a situation where rates are elevated. You can get a really good return on cash. So why take a risk? What's your cash allocation right now? Our cash allocation is a little bit higher today, but one of the things that we're telling investors is now is the time to lock in safety. So yes, 5.5% money market funds are tremendously interesting, but we have to remind ourselves it's relatively easy to get that 6 or even 7% yield in high quality fixed income. And it's that part of the portfolio that will actually go up if we do get that recession. So what we're telling investors is to move into high quality fixed income today and leave a little bit of cash for, for uh, being more opportunistic in, in some areas of equities if and when we do get that recession.